Hello friends, in the previous video, we have derived the Bernoulli's equation from the Euler's equation. And in this video, we are going to see the application of Bernoulli's theorem. So, let us just revise what was the Bernoulli's theorem. It was P by rho g plus v square by 2g plus z is equal to constant. This was our Bernoulli's theorem. Now let us going to see what is the application of Bernoulli's theorem. So in our syllabus we have three applications of Bernoulli's theorem that is number one the Venturi meter, number two orifice meter and number three the Pitot's tube. So let us now see number one the Venturi meter. So this is how the Venturi meter looks. This is the schematic diagram of the Venturi meter. So let us now first understand the working. This is the datum line that is the reference line that we have taken. This is the Venturi meter apparatus and this is a YouTube manometer that we have discussed in our earlier videos. This fluid is known as the manometric fluid. And let us assume that water is flowing through the venturi meter. Let this point be point number one and this point be the point number two. So from the datum line, let us take the distance of the point number two be z2. And from the point one, the distance of datum line be z1. Let the rise from the level of xx the rise let it be delta h and let this distance be z so now let us see the derivation of the volumetric rate of flow of the venturi meter so as we have understood the diagram of the venturi meter let us now consider no energy loss of the fluid flowing from one towards two so if there is no energy loss then the Bernoulli's equation will be P1 by rho g plus V1 square by 2g plus Z1 is equal to plus Z1 is equal to P2 by rho g plus V2 square by 2g plus Z2 which implies that V2 square by 2g is equal to P1 minus P2 by rho g plus v1 square by 2g plus z1 minus z2 which implies that if we bring v1 square by 2g in this side and multiply 2g with this side we will get v2 square minus v1 square is equal to 2g into p1 minus p2 by rho g plus z1 minus z2 now if we apply continuity theorem as we have discussed earlier for a fluid of similar density a1 into v1 is equal to a2 into v2 which implies that v2 is equal to e1 by a2 into v1 let this be equation 1 and let this be equation 2 so if we put this value of v2 in terms of v1 in equation 1 we will get v1 square into a1 square by a2 square minus 1 
is equal to 2g into p1 minus p2 by rho g plus z1 minus z2 so we get the value of v1 is equal to a2 by root over a1 square minus a2 square into 2g p1 minus p2 by rho g plus z1 minus z2 whole root over let this be equation number 3 So after getting this equation, as we all know that the volume flow rate is Qth that is Q theoretical is equal to A1 into V1. Let this be equation number 4. So if we put, if we want to know the value of Qth, we have to multiply A1 with V1. As equation number 3 shows the value of V1. So Q theoretical becomes A1 into V1 that is this value that is A2 by root over A1 square minus A2 square into 2G into P1 minus P2 by rho G plus Z1 minus Z2 whole root over let this be equation number 5 so now we have obtained the value of q theoretical let this be equation number 5 let us consider this value that is p1 minus p2 by rho g plus z1 minus z2 equal to capital H. Let us now find out the value of capital H that is the value of this equation in terms of the manometer attached with the venturi meter. We have two kinds of fluids that is we have considered water flowing through the venturi meter and the manometric fluid. So let us now find out the value of capital H in terms of these two fluid densities. So let us now find out the value of H in terms of the fluid densities from the reading of the YouTube manometer. As in the earlier video, we have discussed from the YouTube manometer, we are getting this equation P of X is equal to P1 plus rho W that is the density of water into G that becomes the mass into z1 that is this this value minus z that is this value is equal to p2 plus rho wg into z2 that is this value minus z minus delta h that is this raised of value plus considering the manometric fluid we are getting rho mg into delta h which implies that p1 minus p2 is equal to rho wg into z2 minus z minus delta of h minus z1 plus z plus rho mg into delta of h we are getting that z is cancelled out so the equation is becoming p1 minus p2 is equal to rho wg into z2 
minus z1 minus delta of h plus rho mg into delta of h so if we divide this by rho g rho wg we are getting p1 minus p2 by rho wg and if we bring z2 minus z1 that is taking the minus sign out and bringing is this equation in this side of equal to we are getting plus z1 minus z2 that is equal to minus of delta h plus rho m by rho w into delta h that is this value since we have taken rho w as common we are dividing rho w from this rho mg so this equation becomes if we take delta of h as common we get rho m by rho w minus 1 into delta of h that is equal to p1 minus p2 by rho wg plus z1 minus z2 so as we taken as we have taken that capital H is equal to this which is in fact equal to this value so we can say capital H is equal to rho m that is density of manometric fluid by rho w that is density of the fluid that is we are considering as water minus 1 into delta of h we have got this value of capital H and now we are going to put this value here so we have got this equation we have written like this we have got the value of h that is h is equal to rho m by rho w minus 1 into delta of h now putting this value in this equation we get that qth is equal to a1 into a2 by root over a1 square minus a2 square into root over 2g into rho m by rho w minus 1 into delta of g now we have obtained the final equation of qth but as we all know that there is slight difference between the actual value and the theoretical value so we consider the coefficient of discharge to be the actual discharge rate by the ratio of actual discharge rate and the theoretical discharge rate so the actual discharge rate becomes coefficient of discharge into the theoretical discharge rate considering this value if we find the actual discharge we will get cd into a1 into a2 by a1 square minus a2 square root over into root over 2g rho m by rho w minus 1 into delta of h so finally we have got the equation by which we can find out the actual discharge rate of a venturi meter tube and hence we have completed one of the application of Bernoulli's theorem.